Hello. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining my, me this afternoon. Um, welcome to our next uh, uh, version of our webinar, the next uh, month's edition. This one is on migration, data migrations, and it's around how implementing a metadata framework will really help ensure a successful on-time data migration. I love doing these. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, today, we're really going to spend a little bit of time on what a data migration is a little bit, some of the pieces to consider, some of the gotchas, and then talk about the DLA, our DLA, um, and how that's helping organizations and it can help organizations, not only with building their modern data platform and new use cases, but you can also use the DLA for data migrations. It's another side to the coin. And so we're really wanting to explore some of that today. Here is the mandatory picture that Samantha Swain makes me put up every time, torments me every time. I'm going greater. But I have been doing these for a while. I love doing the thought leadership associated with doing a webinar. Um, for me, this is an important one because I think data migrations is a key area for businesses to consider as they're in their roadmap of moving to the cloud and more, uh, more workloads into their systems. So, you know, our services, ours is through everything data. When a lot of organizations, especially over the last few years, have been moving up until up to the a uh, new data platform in the cloud, considering doing data lakes and lake houses, et cetera. What they're looking at has been especially focused on the new use cases that they can get. The outcomes are here on the right-hand side. But less thought often has been spent around what about all the stuff that you had and where does that move up? And how potentially, as you're moving some of your other source systems around, how you can help move those workloads up to the cloud and move them onto some of those new systems as well. Um, it's not just your analytics platform that might be moving up to the cloud, but you might be using, using some of the platforming up there for new versions or new types of other applications, new CRMs like Salesforce that's up in the cloud, utilizing those services and moving data around associated with those. So in terms of data migrations, I've kept it simple in my first diagram. A data migration is moving data from an old system to a new system. And it's that moving of data that's obviously the key part of today. I've kept it simple to start this conversation. What is a data migration? It's moving data to a new system. Now, in terms of what those, what that movement is, there's sort of three types. A lot of migration might be around moving from one type of system to another. It might be moving from one type of CRM to another, something like pipe drive to Salesforce, especially as you're moving up into the clouds or new platforms as your base technology. There's a lot of software as a service and other platforms in the cloud that you offer different advantages to some of your on-prem world ones that you had before as you're transitioning and transforming the business, you want to take advantage of that and you need to move some of those workloads, the data that, that drove those workloads through the, the new systems. Sometimes you've got to up migrate from one version of an existing solution to another and there's not a clear uh, pathway for doing it. A lot of vendors actually don't have a very good upgrade path with the data from one version to another. We've recently been doing some ones with business objects where we've moved. Uh, they had to update their Windows servers and upgrade some of those uh, instances underlying the business objects. And we help them with the data side of that migration as well. And then the ones that we've commonly been working on recently are much more on that data and analytics platform side, where when people have moved up to a cloud platform and then wanted to migrate some of their on-prem old world type data sets up into their new platform. And how do you go about doing that? So when we talk about the old system and we're looking at a data migration, 
the key part is really around the scoping. Scoping is so important. Um, and, the, and we'll talk about it soon. A large portion of when a data migration fails, it's around the fact that they haven't scoped it up appropriately. We're not going to, the DLA is not going to help you with the scoping side of things, but we, I wanted to at least share some of this around the scoping side. It's where you need to do a lot of upfront work. How much history are you going to migrate as part of the migration? Are you going to bring in just the last seven years? Are you going to bring in all of history uh, that you've got in your data sets? Are you going to, ref, you know, narrow it down there? If you are going to narrow it down and just pull in a, the more recent years, what are you going to do with the older data? Are you going to just leave it in that and say back it up and keep it as an archive system, or are you going to put it off into another cloud archive where you can have it in some warm or cold storage? Do you need to clean the data and how much cleaning of the data as you move it through in your old system? How messy is that data? Do you have duplicates? Do you have data that you're currently spending a lot of time working around? And is this a good opportunity to clean it as it's coming into the new system? And, all, and key is to really understand who knows the data in that old system so that you can lean on for conversations in there and exploratory stuff and ask the questions of what is good, what is bad, and what needs to be done with that data. These are key elements that you need to consider when scoping. And then in the new system, what are the structures in the new system looking like? When you're moving it in there, are the customer tables, for example, similar types of customer? Or are they actually quite significantly different fields and broken up in quite different table structures and different constructs? Are there different ways that you need to look at being able to link some of the information together? And are you needing to apply new logic to that data? Are there different types of keys and associations there to be able to actually move it across that you need to consider? When you do that, what we typically do is we look in a migration at the scenarios. What scenarios, with, for example, with customer, what types of customer scenarios are there? Is there direct customer, indirect customer? Are there regional ones where they have different types of de deals that they get and discounts that they may have applied? You need to be able to list and, and understand in the scoping and with the news what different scenarios you have for the data and how that logically looks in the tables when you're then looking to migrate it across. And then in the data movement side, the actual migration side, when you look at that, you're going to look about how are you going to actually do the migration? Is it going to be a direct cutover? Are you going to have a day that you're, they were using the old system, the next day they're using the new system? Or are they going to run in parallel for a little while and make sure that the records are coming through correctly in both systems? Are they going to increment, you know, you're going to do one um, migration for last year's data and everything before, and then after that, do a new migration for the current year's data, et cetera? How much of that logic do you need to actually document in a way that people can then see how the migration happened? what logic was applied so that later on they can then review that if there's been some issues or there's some workflow that needs to be considered. And do you already have scripts? And this is a key one with the metadata plot point of view, with the metadata framework. When you're scoping and you're looking at the data, you often write scripts on the data to say, this is the type of data that we're wanting for this scenario. That data can be captured put into the metadata to be able to store there for the migration. And it'll, metadata allows you to do that quite easily and allows you to use that from scoping through the development of the migration solution through to be able to testing it and put, doing QA on the outcomes on the other side of things. If um, one of the problems with a data migration is that sometimes it can be down the track that you actually see if there are issues. So it's important to do that upfront scoping and then have it scriptized so you can actually test what you're analyzing to the end because it's not necessarily always visible on the other side. You can go live with that with a new system with the data migrated. You can work through the first month and transactions go through and it might not be to the next month end or 
the end of year processes that you find that some of the data wasn't necessarily transfer, uh, migrated correctly. That's sort of been a pain point over years for people when they then go later on that things were not necessarily correct. And so having that script and be able to put it into a metadata uh, piece to be able to capture it and trace it and have that, yeah, that traceability is so important. In terms of a data migration framework, what we have is upfront, that a lot of time is in that planning and analysis, which I was talking about looking at that source system, looking through what types of data there is, the types of scenario, documenting, capturing, and putting scripts together. Once you've done that, it's around putting a system in place to be able to look at how to iteratively build your data migration solution to be able to then be able to adapt to be able to run once or run in parallel, be able to build it up over time and be able to then manage those workloads and be able to run it at different times and different cutovers and in test and prod, et cetera. That is a key part that can be uh, put into a metadata framework. The planning and analysis is a part where you can capture those elements the scripts, et cetera, that can be then put in there so that when you cut over, it can be reviewed later on. A key part of a data migration that I think is important to be aware of and sometimes is lost, and I've often seen it lost in the, in the process of how people are thinking about a migration, is the data migration doesn't tend to happen by itself. It's usually in context of a wider program of work. We are moving up into the cloud, for example, and we need to move our old data uh, analytics assets or CRM assets up into a new uh, solution in the cloud. And that is in, in the context of us modernizing our overall product uh, projects, uh, programs of works and modernizing our data and how we deliver that in terms of the business. So a migration is not necessarily just a specific piece, but it has to be considered in that wider context of, of the programs going around it. And that allows you to be able to then reach out and get the context of the right people to talk to and the time scale that you need to deliver the data migration in. And because of that, there's often also critical parts of where um, uh, a program uh, data migration fits. If the data migration fails, often it has a much broader impact than just the migration failing. It impacts where the rest of the wider program of work can be counted on as a success or not. So you need to be aware that these can be quite high priority or high visibility programs of work. And as you can imagine, the data itself is the key part of it. And so you need to affect, understand what that is, what the constraints of that data is. If data is of low or high quality, where does it need to be uh, improved as part of the migration? Where can it stay the same? Where, do, if there's issues, when we know there are issues, is it okay to, to migrate those issues? Where is it important to improve it? What data is key? And understanding that context of how the business is going to use that data, the context of those scenarios on what you're going to use to test and migrate and what you need to be able to validate on the other side is important. And so having business people involved who understand those scenarios and can test it and you can use to validate it on are very, very important. At a high level of data migration, you're defining what's in the target, what the structures and the rules you're populating those. You need to look at those sources and understand the sources, where the data is, how it breaks down. Understand the rules as you're going to transform it. And also potentially if there's bi-directional movement, i.e. if you're going to migrate data into a new system, and then maybe sometimes this happens in scenarios, I've had it happen a few times, where you actually, if you're putting in some new transactions in the new system, you have to need some output going back into the old system because you might still be using the old system for some parts of the business. Some business units may not have fully migrated, so there might need to be some data that pushes back the other way. So you need to consider that by uh, directional movement. In terms of your, the scope is the key part. 
understanding the scope of what doing that scoping and analysis at the front is important. And a survey was identified that 25% of data migration projects overran. Well, sorry, that when they overran, it was because they hadn't scoped it appropriately. They would spend not enough time understanding all the scenarios, all the rules, all the data quality, and all the out the destinations in the right level. Um, all data needs to be considered. You need to make sure that you also consider what people are using the source, the original old systems for. They may have taken some of the data and put it into Excel files and things like that and be using it there. You may need to consider what they're doing outside of those old systems and see if that needs to be applied to the old system as it moves across into your new target destination. And effectively, do you need to migrate all that data? Um, there's also, of course, a, a consideration, um, you know, around what is out of scope and for what is out of scope, how that is going to be handled. And really, a key part is documenting the data migration, that logic element in the middle of it really needs to have some level of documentation. This is something that is going to happen often in one time, a large migration or maybe once with some incremental loads after. It's not like a data and analytics system where it runs every day or more frequently by itself and you can say, okay, well, we've made a mistake, but we can adjust it over time and it's just going to start improving. You, you, you basically need to understand what happens in that one time that you load it or in that small window that you load it and be able to go back and validate that that was right later on or what rules were applied. So you need to really be able to document this this window into your business uh, transformation. So it's really important that what happens in there is documented, which is why a metadata framework is important because a metadata framework like the DLA really is good at being able to doc capture that information in a way that you can document it. So the DLA, which is our metadata framework, the Office Metadata Framework, one of it has several uses. One of it, which most often, if you've talked thought of the DLA, is around building new new analytics data loads and data solutions into your platform to be able to to support the business. That's one perspective. Another perspective side of the same coin is looking at it from a data migration. The same tools can be used for data migration. In the, slot, in the images that I've got coming up, I've used the ones for the new workloads into a platform with multiple source systems into our data and Alex platform. But I'll talk about them more from a data migration perspective. So the visual won't quite match up to my story, but just bear that in mind as we go through this last bit. In a traditional way, when you're loading, you're doing a data migration, you are basically taking data from your source system, in this case, one system, not necessarily multiple systems here. And often, if you look at these as tables in your old system that you're migrating from, in the old way, you would build a pipeline traditionally for each table. For each extraction, you build a pipeline that would go out, load it somewhere, and then move it into pipelines into your new target destination. They were much more granular. The business logic was then spread across each of these pipelines. The, there was more specialist skills needed. It was much more highly custom coding um, and silo pipelines for each one. So you get people in there, you needed to be more specific, specific about the skills that they had. They had, they had much more opportunity to be inconsistent with their delivery because they were delivering at a more granular table level. It was much more time consuming and it really meant that the business benefit was not really there because it had so much more opportunity to raise risk of inconsistent development and longer development times by a smaller group of people developing the migration um, patterns. In the DLA, it goes through and each table sorry about my image showing different systems, different table in your old system gets pushed through a more uh, into a into more single pipelines that use multiple scripts 
to drive through the data through a smaller pipeline. It allows you to have focus on specific SQL skills. It broadens out the number of people you can bring to help on the migration. It's going to allow you to build those faster to bring value to you. It allows you to leverage our pre-built extract and transformation piece. And it really allows you to be able to put logic into one place, those scripts that you use in your scoping into one place and be able to deliver that fast consistently and be able to be documented very quickly and conveniently for you. So that drives and reducing your custom coding there at the same time, makes it much more consistent, de-risks your um, data migration to a considerable amount. So when we look at that framework, the DLA really focuses in on this side of things, that iterative build of your data migration platform or uh, solution, taking these things from your analysis phase that you've scriptized, putting them into a uh, solution that you are driving through the metadata to drive out through to the testing and the QA on the other side. From some, you know, from some inputs that we've had, these are not necessarily or for each case, but it's a, it's a, it gives a, a sign of the reduction in time. We're looking at often around a 50% reduction in the development time of that core element of the development of the data migration um, solution. Not necessarily on the scoping side of stuff, you still gotta spend the same amount of time working with the business to understand those scenarios and the rules, but on the actual development of that Four piece significant impacts on, on the on the development time, significantly reducing it, making it more reliable, and we've knocked this out in a number of customers. It also comes with a, a good amount of operational monitoring, which is something that often is not considered, less considered often when you're just doing a one migration, but it's important to have these operational monitor, uh, monitoring in place especially if you're doing parallel runs between your old and your new system, or when you are doing between test, uh, pre-prod and production, and you want to validate that the run times of your migration are consistent for your planning purposes and for execution on the actual day of the migration, which I find is one of the most stressful days. And so having operate monitoring in place to be able to then report on that day of when things are happening so that people know when to do, when they've got to intercede and do things is incredibly important. It is an emotional release to be able to hold this information and be able to say we are on track or we need to intercede now. So really just to reinforce those benefits, it's around the uh, being able to ingest data quickly and and, um, and easily um, and into your migration plan, to be able to push that through out of our feature-rich out-of-the-box solution. It's got the ability to extend and adapt. You can take those migration pieces and extend that out to also benefit you in some of your new use cases for your data analytics platform. That other side of the coin can also be included there. It reduces your test cycles and it helps you with your regression testing, et cetera, as well, because you're taking those scripts, putting in the metadata framework, and then using it on the testing and the QA side on the other side as well. So then just looking at it from a high level again, in this picture, remember, I didn't change it from the sort of the art analytics platform of multiple systems into a presentation layer, but consider this in the same way of a source system that you're moving from your old source, your old system, and these are tables, the granular tables, into your new granular tables. I have found on many of my uh, data migrations that I still use a staging layer in between do all the transformation up into into here whoops um, so that we can basically you know keep a track and make sure that the logic's been applied and be able to audit on this middle layer be able to do that incremental load and counts and reporting on there be able to do that um, you're able to extract that load in a traditional way you'd build one for each of those source tables it becomes quite cumbersome 
it allows a lot more problems to be happen because you'll be able to yeah, you're going to have to do it time and time and time again. Developer has to develop those individual jobs accordingly. You have to apply those business logic and, and sometimes they can be done at different spots because you've got different people having to do it and multiple tables. It's much easier to make a mistake and put the logic in the wrong spot. Um, and so, and putting that logic into the end, you've got to, you know, there's an inconsistency that can come up into it. Well, with a GLA approach, you take each of your core tables and your granular um, source system and you push it through your metadata layer where in one set of packages or a couple of sets of packages, you're putting all of those scripts there from your scoping and you're able to push that through, still put it into a staging and transform views of it so you can see that granular and be able to do your reporting on numbers of records coming through for, for parallel runs, et cetera, and then transform it into your end destination. Much more simple. It's it's uh, configured met that metadata side. It only has to develop a small pipeline for each, for, for that core system, not necessarily for each granular table. And basically the views on that is much easier to validate, put uh, testing scripts around and be able to much more uh, much more robustly put your migration framework around that core set of views rather than a different one for each granular table. That is my is my slides for today. Let me stop sharing. About half an hour, just pass this. Uh, if you have any questions, throw them into the chat or the Q&A section. This uh, recording this uh, webinar is re recorded. We will uh, be creating a video link afterwards and send it to people who signed up. But also let us know if you've watched this and you think uh, of someone else who you think might find this topic useful, um, and we can send them that recording afterwards. I did show the other side of the DLA, so it's not you know the the um, it's not just for data migrations, of course, and it mostly is for building new workloads into your data and analytics platform in the cloud. But I showed you the other side, which is migrating some of your of systems from an old system into your new system and how this is a different approach and, or a different way of using those same tools. Very powerful. We've got some DLA experts who we can easily get to talk to you about these as well. No questions coming through in the chat or the Q and A, but so I'll leave you. I'll give you back the uh, a little bit of time. Hope you have a good lunch or a good afternoon tea, depending on which side of the casement. And uh, thank you very much. Have a good day.